ought to be silent. Amen. We need to be jumping and praising him and just why? Passing out. Because our God is good. Yeah. I always love what the son is saying in Psalm 123. If it hasn't been for the Lord. If it hasn't been for the Lord. I say I'm gonna close. So we can go. Salah we can go. Let's say get it together. Let's get it together. Go. If it hasn't been for the Lord, some of you would have been would have, would have uh, been spoken those words. Ashes to ashes. I'm gonna do it. I guess I'm gonna go. Huh? Guess I'm gonna go. Go. John. Guess I'm gonna get to the go. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. I'll continue from where I preached last two Sundays. I mean the Sunday before last. But I have somehow kind of rephrased it. I've given it another name. Same sermon, but another name. Amen. I call it, Don't Give Up, Try Again. Don't Give Up, Try Again. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Don't give up, but try again. Daring to be a different man. God is good. Amen. We were told about this guy, Saul, whom the Bible said that he was a very brilliant man, a very handsome man, <coughs> whose father was Kish. Amen. And we were told that uh, that uh, his father lost an ass or donkey. And Saul was requested by his father to go and look for the donkey, the burden bearer. And the Bible said that it had been for three days that he had been traveling throughout the land looking for the donkey. And he couldn't find it. And in the three days he had exhausted all food, all money, only a last quarter left, 25 cents left. Only 25 cents left. And the whole tour group couldn't afford to live on that. He's exhausted everything. And he was just on the verge of breaking up. And he was just beginning to turn back. He was just saying this half, let's turn back. Amen. We can't go on anymore. We can't find it. We can't have it. It's just nowhere to be seen. It's nowhere here. He looked at the land and the land said, I'm ragged. We can't come through. Amen. He looked at the weather and the weather said, I'm trusting. You can go through. He looked at all the terrain and said, Oh, it's just right. Too much. You did turn back. And everything around him was just speaking to him and telling him, Go back, go back, go back. You can't find it. And he was just beginning. And he looked even looking into his head and into his pocket. He only found 25 cents. What can you do with 25 cents? Some of you are just beginning to give up because you only have 25 cents. Amen. Some of you are just beginning to give up because you have nothing more left. Because you have exhausted everything. You have tried and tried and tried, but you are exhausted. You are just beginning to have this kind of heart that is beginning to come out in souls. And souls begin to say, we need to turn back. They were just on the verge, just on the verge of throwing in the towel and saying, I just cannot bathe anymore, I need to turn back. And he was just on the verge of turning about, just about to turn back, when one of his own told him, let's go and see this man of God. Let's go and see the seer. Let's go and see the visionary. Let's go and see the man of God. He looked at his hands. He looked at the last quarter dollar. And he looked at the man. 25 cents left. We can't afford. Amen. And then the Bible said, listen to this. That on the way to the sea, they don't even know where the sea is. And they went to these young ladies. They were near the well. Praise the Lord. They went to these ladies that were near the well. And they asked the ladies. And the strange thing, the, the, the word you say is that the ladies who were near the well knew where the sea was. The word you say means this. That the other ladies, the ones that were not near the well, they did not know where the sea was. It was only the one 
near the well. Amen. You see, when you are in the word of God, you know where to find the sea. Praise the Lord. And the challenge to the ladies is this. Ladies, you need to walk yourself in the well. Otherwise, you have nothing to offer. You can show the way. You can show the way to the sea. Amen. Because the Hebrew word you see simply means this. It was only the ladies that were in the well. They were the one that knew where the sea was. They were the one that could show the way. And the soul came to them. This is what they said. Oh, the seer, he's up there in his house. That's his house. You need to go up the mountain. One more mile to go. One more river to cross. One more mountain to climb. He's there. And they went up. And they found this man of God. The Bible says there is a come to this man of God. Elisha. Elisha comes from two words. The word Eli, son or adopted son. Amen. Sha means authority. The word Eli means adopted son. Amen. Or elevated to be adopted. And the word Elisha simply means this. Adopted and elevated into a position of authority. Adopted and elevated into a position of authority. And that's exactly when Saul came to Elisha. That's exactly what Elisha did. As he laid hands on Saul, Saul was elevated into a position of authority. Amen. He came looking for an S. He went taking a crown. He came looking for a donkey, a burden bearer. He went back, he returned with authority. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. God is good. And this is what the Bible said. That as he came to Saul, uh, as he came to Elijah, on their way up, the Lord spoke to Elijah. You see, he was not looking for the crown. He was looking for the donkey. But in the process of looking for the crown, the Lord was speaking to Elijah. And the Lord was saying, a young man is on his way up to you. He's looking for the donkey. But that's not what I plan, what I determined. Amen. He was looking, he only knows that he's looking for the donkey. But what I know is this, you're going to give him the crown of Israel. Amen. <coughs> Amen. And as he walked up, Elijah was looking out and saw this young man coming up. And he said, reach at him, bless him. And then this guy said, I'm come, I, I have no, I've exhausted everything. I'm just coming to seek you. Can you please tell us where to find the donkey? And uh, Elijah said, it's not about the donkey. It's about a divine appointment. It's not about the donkey. It's just because, it's because God planned it out. It's not about the donkey. It's because I have something to offer you from the Lord. It's not about the donkey. It's because you are a person of destiny and purpose. Amen. Amen. And as he came up to Elisha, Elisha spoke to him. And Elisha said, you need to kneel down, guy. What? I come looking for a donkey, I know, but you need to lead them. I need to do the first things first. What's the first things first? I need to lay hands on you and give you the crown of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't give up. Try again. Sometimes we give up too early and we miss what God has for us. Amen. Amen. Many times we miss what God has destined and purpose for us because we just give up too early. The sorrow sorrow around the built up the tone on the table. And the kind is under the number of Sassana Menaka. And then we sent the sum of the door of Katuba Sassana and go to Revit Kedar. Sare, you will do two boy a weekend. Sandra and a car can not. Can't send a woman in the Sassoria or a car. And they will allow the long book your book, some of the king like I want to tell Sometimes we really need what God has purpose for us. I want to come with this message of encourage you, my brothers and sisters. You may be going through some trials, you may be going through some experience. That you are just on the verge of giving up. I want to tell you today, stop it. Don't give up. Don't give up because you could miss something that God has purpose for you. Amen. There's something definitely on the way. 
There's something that God has for me. Don't give up in everything that you do in God. As a Christian, as a child of God, don't give up too easily. You see, this life never guarantees that situations will remain the same. There's always seasons every now and then. I said some time ago that you will go through your winter, you go through your autumn when you share everything. You go through your winter when you, uh, you have an egg. And you will go through your summer and then when you enjoy. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. You go through all seasons of life. All kinds of situations. Amen. And if you hold on, you will get it. God is good. All the time. Giving up may mean missing your greatest moments. Amen. I'm just about done. 12 o'clock, I'll send you home. Amen. Can you remember how exhausted Saul's team was? With everything exhausted, no sign of hope or relief, having the last quarter shekel, the best option is to give up. Friends, giving up may mean missing on your greatest moments. Kakua ni nao ya lo rao rao si yo so rao rao mo tukuna iti na wasi Don't give up too easily in your walk with God. In your faith in God. Amen. Just when Saul said, let's give up and go back. Then the counsel of the servant came to Saul. Come, let's go see the sea. You see friends, Saul's long walk or search was quite exhausting. It was driving him towards impatience. Enduring, endurance was beginning to be challenged. Long suffering was becoming unbearable. And Saul's mind was beginning to reason. The best option was to go back. And today you could be in the same situation. You're just about to break or perhaps giving up. Many times we give up too easily when we are just around the corner. And when we miss some of the most important things of our life. We miss some wonderful opportunities. We miss seeing God working on the other side. Amen. 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 So alone in the sort of sort of around and the give up in the sort of car. Sometimes we give up on our husband and we give up on our wife. Sometimes we give up on our children. And as we give up, we fail to realize, we fail to see that God is working on the other side as well. Amen. You see, God always answers prayers. But God could answer prayer from your side or from the other side. Amen. Amen. If God, if you are not seeing God answering prayers from the other side, Maybe because answering prayers from the other side. Tell the one next to you then. Tell the one next to you. Don't look at me. If you are not seeing God answering your prayers on your side, it's because God is answering your prayers from the other side. Still working. 
working and you are working from the other side. Give all the people You see, that's exactly what Saul was going through. From his side was the lost quarter shekel, the lost quarter dollar. From his side was just this. For from the other side, God was making a king. Amen. Was in the process of seating a king. Amen. And throwing a king. Hallelujah. He was on his way to Elisha. Elisha has the anointing. Not only to, not only to adopt him or to take him in. But to take him and elevate him. Many, many, many. Many. To his position of authority. Amen. If you are not seeing it, maybe you are on your way up the same hill. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell the one next to you, if you are not seeing it, maybe you are on your way up the same hill. You are seeing it. Amen. 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 Anointing. 
Amen. We could miss leadership anointing if we give up too easily. You see, brothers and sisters, some of us are wishing that we had not given up school too early. We have not dropped out too early. Because if we had, we would have been in some kind of positions of authority right now. Amen. Amen. So, if he had turned back, he would have missed God through Samuel's anointing. Don't give up because it could be you are on your way when things are exhausted and things seem still. Maybe you are on your way towards your anointing. Amen. God is God. Some of you sitting here and you are on your way to be pastors. Some of you sitting here are on your way to be prophets. Some of you watching the DVD are on your way to be mighty men of God. Hallelujah. But you will have to go through your wilderness experience first. You will have to go through your exhaustion first. Before you can receive your anointing. You see, if you turn back in the midst of the exhaustion. If you turn back in the midst of the wilderness. You will miss your anointing. Saul would have missed this if he had turned back. Amen. 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 But the Soviet Kemenor Kamu in Tamiki War, Kemuni is our constant thing on a long south, when Yahoo came with Tamatanganikan. Amen. Amen. So we can be south, long south, something I'm not looking for a town, one don't go now. Someone is south, something I'm not going to be looking at a cloak and it took to a very duck. Said it took to a very thing, a woman in Matin Tuna, one of the Marcus and a woman in Venus, a woman loads a ringer. One thing I know, you are on your way. Amen. Turn to the one next to you and say, Say to you are on your way. Tell him or her, you may not see it now, but you are on your way. Don't give up too easily. Don't give up too easily. Or you will miss it. Praise the Lord. God is good. The second one, second point. Saul would have missed the Spirit of the Lord coming on him. Not only would have he missed the anointing from Samuel, he would have missed the Spirit of the Lord as well coming upon him. The Bible said, the story said, that as Samuel lay hands on him, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Amen. It came upon him. Amen. Many have missed the call of God because they have left too early. So I can even get a call, Mary Tata. Yes, sir, my beautiful cause of Sarah Galat and Abuja want to be in the Kinako. But the Sabo and the Sarah Yaman and Lingi Nikolo Vera, like a number of their cap or tenity. Amen. Amen. Elias, I'm sorry. Forgive me. It's Elias. The misquote there. Amen. God is good. If it had been, if it had been not, if it had not been for 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 Saul going up, he would have missed the laying hands of the mighty man of God. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. Amen. Some of us, the Spirit of the Lord was just beginning to descend mightily upon us. When we allow others to rob us of our anointing. So no, no, Sabi, I'll come to the salam and illuminate the club. Pobo la salam, I can go to the Buddha content vision. Amen. That's why Revelation said, don't allow someone else to rob your anointing, to rob you of your crown. Amen. Listen to this. We have allowed many things. Many things could have robbed us of our anointing. You would have missed the spirit of the Lord coming mightily upon us. Lust, pride, indiscipline, money, sports, idols, to disrobe us of our wealth in Christ and decoy us of our walk with God. Amen. Friends, like the little coin, the most tragic loss is to be lost in your own house. 
Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. Amen. Praise God. The third one. He would have missed receiving his prophetic gifts. If he had turned back, he would have missed his prophetic gifts. The Bible said that when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, what happened was this. He prophesied. I said to us two, year, two weeks ago, that when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon us, if we do not give in too easily, this is what it happens. It changes our confession. It changes our testimony. It changes the word that comes out of us. I was challenging us to be prophetic. We can speak prophetic words. All of us, I believe, can step anointing that we can speak. We speak prophetically even into our own situations. Amen. I got mixed up. It should be seven. I'm sorry about that. Amen. God is good. Thank you. Let uh, uh, Amen. The fourth, third one. Or the fourth, third one. The Ukulean means prophetic anointing or prophetic gifts. The Bible said that, really, that when Samuel laid hands on him, two, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, he became a different man and he spoke prophetically. Amen. The The fourth one, I'm just about done. He would have missed becoming a different man or person. Amen. If he had given up to Israel, he would have the opportunity to be changed. Sometimes we give up to Israel and we miss the anointing to become a different person, a different man. The daughter of The reason some of us remains the same because we have missed the opportunity to be changed through the ministry of the word, sermons, teachings, worships, seminars, fellowships with mature believers, Bible reading time, amen. I would like to encourage us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some time ago I had this pastor calling me. He said, uh, Dr. Allah, can you please come up? And I went up last month, he said. And I went up to see him and and uh, he just got through a, a surgery and uh, uh, he really looks uh, uh, frail and he's about 72 years old. And I came and said, he said, Pastor, I'm, I'm just calling you because I want you to know that I know within my heart and I'm just about to go. And he said, uh, the reason I call you is because I want you to look at the materials because I'm going to give it to you. All the materials that he had acquired as a pastor. He was a Methodist uh, senior pastor, Dr. Lassi. And uh, as he was speaking, he was literally crying. He was uh, being overwhelmed. And he was saying, these are some of the things that I want, I want to give to you because I know that you can use it to teach and to preach. And he has a really uh, abundance of wealth materials and uh, 1983 when I came to Lombasa he was the very first pastor that I met and we would meet at his house in this little morning and half past four in the morning he would come around and he would just pull out big toes and say wake up wake up wake up guys wake, wake up guys and he would peel out big toes and he would carry our pillows with our with our blanket we would come and sit on his veranda and we would be praying praying from half past four five o'clock until 6 o'clock. And we would go around the Lombasa, or Lombasa area, preaching and teaching. Because I was still young then. I was just coming up to Lombasa and I was very young. I would carry his bag, briefcase. And we would go to all the cane fields. He would be preaching. I would be just going along with him, carrying the briefcase. I would come up and I would put up the charts and he would begin teaching. And we would walk back. Sometimes we walk 10 miles, 20 miles, 50 miles. Because the last bus out of one bus is always 4 o'clock. Or 5, 5 o'clock. As the bus leaves, it goes into the rural area. But we would be going to the rural areas. We would take the last bus and we would walk back. 
after the teachings and the preachings in the last 20 miles, 15 miles. And I would arrive home about 3 o'clock in the morning. 4 in the morning. Sometimes I would just, too much for me, I would take out briefcase, throw it in the crane fields and make a mark. <laughs> in the morning when I get to work in NLTB, I was working in NLTB then, I would take the, the company vehicle and I would drive to the cane field and look for the bay. <laughs> Pick it up again. And in the afternoon after work, I would go back to this house. What would be our next plan? You would say, Joe would be walking here, next house. And what we would do every, every night. And I believe I received my teaching anointing from him. I believe because of him, I was able to stand up and teach. And teach. And he <coughs> preach. Because he was a mighty man of God. And sometimes we would walk and I said, Joe, I'm sorry, but we, I can't pay your password. Because then he had been excommunicated from the Methodist Church. He was excommunicated from the Methodist Church because the Methodist Church wanted him to stop appealing during his sermons. Because he would preach and he would make an open invitation, anybody want to come to the Lord, come. And because he doesn't want to stop, they excommunicated him. So he had no salary. And we had to go around with empty pockets and just. And everybody would, it would be so overwhelmed just seeing people coming to the Lord and giving their life to the Lord. But what I'm trying to say here is, you know. It's rubbing shoulders with brothers and sisters. It's going to fellowship, attending teachings that makes you a different man. Amen. Kakun do tumay wala. Kung tumay wala na tayo sa wala. Kung tumay wala tayo fellowship. Balte na may buli ko at matanda tayo. Yung falat na buli ni Tuber, yung falat na nung buli ko tayo. Amen. And you miss this guy. You miss how to live up to be a different man. Amen. So all if you had turned back, you lost the opportunity of becoming a different person. The last one, and I shall shut up. It's 12 o'clock, time for lunch. <laughs> he would have missed finding his father's donkey, which is the very last thing. He would have missed finding his father's donkey. You see, God understands what you are looking for. He understands your desire. But the thing is, he wants his best, not yours. And many times, he gives us our best. Or to give us our best, we must first seek his best. Amen. Church, to be someone different, don't ever give up to Israel. Don't ever throw in the towel. Don't give up your walk, no matter how hard, challenging, or painful your journey may be. Hold your breath, take care of your heart, don't retaliate, control your temperament, even in your wealth has been exhausted, and there is no more food in your keep. Don't give up to Israel. Amen. You see, you are bound to go through your hot spots in life. The journey will be tough and rough. There will be heartaches that you search over and over. Some things you won't understand. Life's terrain will be uneasy. And weather will become unpredictable. And you won't have control over the changing seasons. And, but all this, but all this do not mean that there is no more hope left to feel. Because God is still there. Amen. I like what the Lord said in Matthew 26. He said, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. You see, even our Lord almost gave up at Gethsemane. He almost gave up. He said, Father, if you can remove this cup, remove it. And then he chose to submit. Because sometimes we have the brain, we have the edge, we have, we're just about to give up. If only we can submit. Amen. If only we can submit, the Lord will definitely meet our needs. For his Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Had he given up, we wouldn't be here today. Had the Lord given up at Gethsemane, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't have the opportunity to be saved. Sin would have its wrath of us. And we wouldn't be enjoying life. Praise God, Christ didn't give up to Israel. 
You see, he said to Peter after the Gethsemane incident, he said to Peter that he could have called 10,000 angels. But he didn't because he wanted to submit to God's will. The world may, the world may offer another solution or a way to get around what we are going through. But it will not be the best for you. Just don't give up. I love what Edwin Lewis Coles once said. He said, winners are not those who never fail, but those who never quit. Winners are those who never fail, but those who never quit. Tommy Barnett said something like this. There is honor in not wanting to be quit. Or no, no, not wanting to quit. Then Edwin Lewis Cole, the founder of Christian Men's Network, said this. He said, God never starts anything on a negative, and he will never end on a negative, and things on a negative. Anything that is passing through your life will be replaced by something greater, more positive than what you have experienced before. Let me end. Amen. I was wondering why Christ was called the bright morning star. And I realize it's for all the darkest nights. Why Christ is called the bright morning star. It's for all the darkest night of the people who will believe in him. Why Christ is called the morning star is all for your darkest nights. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. On Thursday, I was looking through some of my CDs hymns and choruses, or my gathers. I was looking through a book on uh, the history of some of the songs and uh, hymns. And I read about Bill Gaither writing the song, Joy Comes in the Morning. I read about Mary Modi, an Anglican priest's wife, who through the challenges that they went through, wrote the song, The Anchor Holds. I read about Horatio Spafford, an American lawyer who lost his children in the cruel Atlantic, who wrote, it's well, it is well within my soul. And I even read about Gloria Gaither when she lost a son and he wrote because he lives I can face the world and I ended by reading about the song written by Dirty Rambo when he wrote the song bigger than all my problems bigger than all my needs than any mountain that I can or cannot see. You see, I don't know what you're going through. You may be giving up on something. You may be on the verge of breaking down. You may be thinking of turning back. You may think there's no more hope. The people whom you thought to be near you, whom you expected to be there with you, they are no longer there. But whatever you're going through in life right now, Church, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because God will never, never, ever give up on you. Say that again.